Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about how to mask in Adobe Illustrator in about five minutes or so. If you enjoy this tutorial and you want to see more great Illustrator tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you really love the video, well, consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course all about how to retouch images. A link will appear up there. It's a little eye icon. There's also a link down in the bio. It's a great way to support the channel and this channel is funded entirely by viewers just like you. Now, we're cutting into our five minutes here, so let's jump over to Illustrator and check this thing out. Now, a few different masks that we can use in Illustrator, and what exactly is a mask? Well, the basic idea behind a mask is that we can erase a part of a graphic or a part of a group of graphics and hide it, but never really get rid of it. We just hide it from view. So, like here, the white circle behind the word bourbon, that whole section could be masked out. It could also be uh, using something called the Pathfinder here in Illustrator, but uh, the point is that could be a mask that's just knocking that bit of the circle away and hiding it so we can see that kind of darkish blue background behind that logo. But I want to show you how to use what's called a clipping mask. And that's because we have this little background graphic, but you can see it's just, it's out of line. It's way out over the gray part of uh, the artboard out here, and we want to contain it just within the image. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to copy the background shape, and we're going to do that because the background shape here is the exact size of our document, right? So I'm going to go edit to copy, just copy it. I'm going to come over here and just lock up my background layer once more. I don't want to mess around with that. I'm going to open up this logos layer. I can see that, yeah, that big starburst graphic is in there, and there it is. It's right there. Now the key is I want to paste this graphic, but I want the graphic to be just above uh, the object which I wish to mask, or in this case, clip, because we're going to create what's called a clipping mask. So I have that compound path. I'm going to go edit and I'm going to choose paste in front. So paste in front is going to, well, as you see, paste it in front of everything on that layer, but it most importantly paste it in place as well. Uh, we can just click on that layer and drag it and just drop it just above that compound path, which is our little starburst shape. And what I can do is hold down shift and select the little circle here in the layers panel uh, that's associated with that, or I can hold down shift and with my move tool, which is the black arrow there, the selection tool, hold down shift and just select that additional graphic. So ba both graphics are now selected and go object, clipping mask and choose to make. So what this has done is it's taken that front graphic and used it as the mask and it's hiding everything except the bits that overlap with the uh, the graphics that are also selected. And in this case, it takes that, uh, that sunburst effect and it clips it within that rectangle as we can see here in our layer panel. That rectangle is where the compound mask is being clipped within and we can see everything else is hidden. So that's the first way to mask in Adobe Illustrator. Simple, straightforward. Um, let's talk about just like a very basic layer mask. So if we take this group of graphics here, you can see I'm selecting this group here in my layers panel. The whole group is selected. And by the way, you can apply a layer mask to a group. You can apply it to the full overall layer or you can apply it to a specific path within the layer. So I could just select this path, right? And that's all I would be applying a layer mask to if I come to my transparency panel and we have this little square with a little slash through it. When we double click that, we add a mask. Now, I want to add this mask to this entire group. So I'm going to make sure that I specifically click that circle. You see how it's not outlined and this circle is outlined? That's because that compound path is what's selected. So make sure you select that circle. We select that entire group, not the overarching layer, just this group because all we want to attack is this logo over here. And I'm going to double click this uh, little thumbnail and you can see it's filled with black because the way a layer mask works is when there's black, that part of the image or graphic is hidden. And in this case, you can see the whole mask is black. So I actually want to reveal this. So I'm just going to uncheck clip and you can see when I do that, well, the mask is now filled with white and sure enough, I can see my graphic. So I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out a rectangle just to hide like half of this logo, right? So I'm going to go right there and hide half the logo. But the problem is I didn't hide it. It's only like semi-transparent. And that's because the color fill of this shape is this taupey, not really taupey, uh, more like a mustardy yellow color. And while the mask doesn't necessarily see uh, this mustardy color, if I click on my foreground or my fill here to open up the color picker, it's basically seeing that, but only the brightness value of 75%. So it's really seeing like this brightness, right? Something like that. And that's what it's applying. If I drag this all the way down to the bottom and give it a solid black and hit OK, you can see there we go. That whole half of the logo is missing. And now you can see my layers panel has changed this layers opacity mask to get back to your original editable graphic 
file, just click on the uh, the other thumbnail here in the transparency panel, and you can see you will have stopped editing the layer mask, and you're back to working in uh, your graphic file. Now, at the risk of going above the five minute limit, let me show you a couple other things you can do with the mask here. So if we select this bourbon logo, so that's uh, this logo right here, the bourbon logo, right? Select the whole group. Once more, I'm going to double click here in the transparency panel to add a mask. I'm going to unclip this, and I'm going to draw yet another rectangle. So I'm just going to drag a rectangle over and blop. I'm going to drop it there. One of the cool things you can do is you can apply a gradient and fade graphics in and out. So if I say, hey, gradient, yep, let's go white to black. And white is going to show through at 100%. And the white is over here on the left side of our rectangle. The black is out over here. So you can see it's hiding and fading the graphic away. And if we want a more pronounced fade, we just click and drag our black handle over. And you can see it's going to fade more and more and more. Now, this is not a totally solid black. So what I'll do is I'll actually get rid of this, this little color stop. But before I do that, I'm going to click up here on my color panel. I can just drag this color black and drag it down onto the gradient stripe. And you'll see what it'll do is it'll make another color color handle here if I can actually get it to there we go it's gonna make another color handle and then I can just grab this other not quite black black handle click and just drag it away and drop it away and you can see here we get this really cool effect where we have our logo fading out to nothing uh, so it's a pretty neat little effect and you can do that by applying a gradient to the shape you're using to mask in a layer mask. Now, one last thing before we wrap this thing up here, this Wanderer logo, uh, maybe the client comes to us and says, look, it's the retro text is cool, but I really just want a hole punched in the ribbon that says Wanderer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up that Wanderer group, right, by hitting that little arrow there to the left of it. And I'm going to collapse some of these other panels, like the color panel and maybe even the transparency panel temporarily. And I'm looking, here's the text, right? There's that Wanderer group text. So what I'll do is I'll jump into here and I just want to select just the text. So it's right here, just Wanderer. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to copy it to my clipboard by going edit, copy. And then I'm just going to shut off the whole Wanderer text group. See that? And then I'm going to go edit and I'm going to choose paste in place. And you'll see that it pastes it in place. Uh, there's a problem because the same arc was not copied over. I'll show you how to get that. And you can see here's our Wanderer text right up here. That's fine. This is going to be used in a mask. Uh, the first things first, though, let's get that same arc back. So let's go Effect, Warp, and choose Arc. And the arc here I happen to know is 18%. So there we go. It's just perfect. You can see there, 18%. Uh, and then everything else is default. Hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with a complete 100% black. So I'm going to double click on my fill color. I'm going to make sure it's just totally black. Hit OK. And then I'm going to cut this. So I'm essentially copying it to my clipboard, but you know, cutting it away. So go ahead, edit, cut. Voila. And then I'm going to select, well, I could select the whole group, but I think I'll target and just choose the actual compound pattern down here at the bottom, which is the ribbon and the shield kind of collective there. So I'm going to select just that compound path. I will double click to add a layer mask. In this case, I want to unclip it. So let's just say, yep, unclip it. And then we can just go edit and choose to paste in place. And you can see because our text is solid, 100% black, it just punches a hole right through the ribbon. I can come over here, select to get back to my normal editing mode, collapse, get out of it. And those are a few different ways that you can create and work with masks in Adobe Illustrator and how they can be really helpful from the clipping mask to the layer mask to everything in between. We covered it in this tutorial. If you use this technique and you think it's something cool that you would like to show me, go ahead and upload it to Instagram and tag me in it. And my uh, Instagram handle is at tutvid. There'll be a little bug that appears here on the screen somewhere. Uh, and you can hit me up over on Instagram. We have the, con the conversation is, is alive over there, uh, so to speak. So, so for creating clipping masks and layer masks and really a lot of different stuff with masks, that you can do here in Adobe Illustrator. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.